your neighbor and say, it's time to become a worshiper. Come on. People don't like this because every time you say a worshiper, they always tag charismatic and Pentecost and all these hoorahs. Now listen, we do celebrate Jesus at this church. I'll never apologize for celebrating Jesus. He got out of the grave. He didn't stay in the grave. I believe he's worth celebrating more than anything in this world. Now, there is a time to be reverent. There's a time to be reverent. There's a time for all things, the Bible says. And when there's time to be reverent, we want to get down and we want to say, guys, it's time to be reverent to God. But if there is a time, if you're going to outlast tough times, you've got to become a worshiper. You've got to become a worshiper. Bible, watch your Psalm chapter 76. Verses 1 through 3 is where we're going to go. If you dare say amen. All right, hang with me. It says, in Judah. Everybody say, in Judah. Is God known? I thought this was so powerful. I was just going to preach on this one little part here, but God wanted me to go a little bit deeper. It says, in Judah, is God known? His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. And look in verse 3. All of a sudden, he says, God is known in Judah. His tabernacle is in Salem, and his dwelling place is in Zion. And watch this. It says, There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Is that right? Selah. Okay, I said Sheila earlier. Um, Selah. And what Selah means this, y'all ready? Mark this down. You say, why in the world does Selah come at the end of verse 3? Very important you get this because this is going to make the whole sermon worth it all. Selah means this, stop, pause, pay attention. This is worth listening to. That's what this means. When you, re you read that word Selah, it means stop, pause. This is where if you're going to get this, if you're going to learn how to outlast hard times, you've got to stop your life, you've got to pause, you've got to quit being so busy, and you've got to start taking heed to the Bible. The Bible, the Word of God, will do the work of God. The work of God is the will of God. Okay? The Word will do the work, and the work is the will. That's what it is, the three W's, okay? He said this, uh, how in the world do I outlast tough times? One point, pretty simple, you must become a worshiper. You might, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you must become a worshiper. It's time to worship. The Bible says in Psalm 76, 1, in Judah is God known. Now watch this. According to the Hebrew language, I'm going to teach you, Judah means praise. Now mark that down. You can mark in your Bible, in Judah, put right above it or right beside it or wherever you want, in praise, God is known. In praise, God is known. Judah means praise. So in other words, God says, if you want to know me, how many of y'all want to know God? How many of y'all want to experience God? Not just come to church, not just read your Bible, but I'm talking about having an experience with God that is life-changing. God says these words, if you want to experience me, if you want to find me, if you want to see where I'm at, he said, find Judah, find praise. And when you find praise, you'll find Judah. You'll find Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Can I preach this just for a moment? I go to the hospital all the time. This week, I've got to preach seven sermons. This week, I've got two funerals. This week, I'm going to be at KCA. I'm going to be everywhere this week. Y'all pray for your pastor, okay? Pray for my health. Because Satan, if one thing Satan's after is my health. And I'm telling you guys, pray for your pastor's health, okay? That God would keep me healthy, that I can preach his name. Because I'm going to tell you, y'all listen to me. Satan comes to steal kill and destroy right now satan's after your pastor's health he wants to kill me so listen y'all got to help me pray okay watch this i go to the hospital all the time brendan this week i went two times i got three phone calls from terry dabney this week alone i finally told terry dabney he works at parent ramsey quit calling me quit call i don't because every time i see dabney i know i'm gonna go to the, go to the funeral home you know what so here's the i went to the hospital two times this week and every time, 100% of the time, when I walk into a room, the person's either sick, they're either on their deathbed, or they're at their, taking their, take their last breath. Usually when you see me walk in a hospital, it's bad. It's bad. I walked in this week, and I talked to a person, and here was the number one thing he said. He said, Brian, if I could go back, if I could go back, 
I give God everything I got. I quit worrying about the house. I quit, I quit even worrying about my children because they're God's babies anyway. He said, I quit worrying about my bills. God's got that anyway. He said, if I could rewind my tape, if I could go back, he said, I would go back and I would be sold out for Jesus Christ. Can I interrupt this really quick and tell you guys and let me preach for just a moment? Don't wait till you're on your deathbed. Don't wait while you've got breath in your lungs and you're able to praise God. Praise the Lord. You've got to find Judah in your days of gold. Don't wait until you're sick in your bones and you're on your deathbed and you think you're going to call a preacher and a preacher's going to come by and save you. It don't work like that, Allison. What messes people up, they think it really works. They think if they walk, walk down the aisle, come to the, to the altar, and say a prayer that everything's going to be okay. I'm going to break it lie up today. That's wrong. And I'm sorry that you've been taught that all your life. I know about this. When I got born again, and I truly gave my heart over to Jesus Christ, that's when hell came against me. That's when I had to find God in the midnight hour. That's when I had to reach down and grab the horns of the altar and hang on with all that I got. There's a lie going around that says it's an easy believism. You live the way you want to live and say the prayer, act the way you want to act, and you'll go to heaven. That's not my God. My God is holy. My God is pure he's looking for peculiar people he's looking for holy people that in the last hour would say i know it don't look good but i'm going to find judah i'm going to find praise in my life and i'm going to do whatever i got to do to find the lord see here's the thing the reason why i want to go to you ask you guys to say i receive it I, I receive my healing because there's life and death in the tongue and i want you to confess it i truly felt in my spirit and I'm going to slow down as I say this because when, when God speaks in my spirit, I, I, I take that for, for real. And I wrote it down. I want to give it to you. I really believe there's a word for you, me, and you today. God's people, this is what the Lord spoke into my spirit. God's people must advance and progress in their walk with God and become true worshipers in this last day. In this last hour, how many of y'all believe the horn could sound at any moment? Would God be proud of your worship today? God's looking at your heart, Allison, right now. And the way you worshiped him this morning, if we really believe that this is the last hour, I believe that true worshipers shall rise up and declare this land back over to Jesus Christ. I declare we take our churches back, not just Elkhorn, but the enemy's had our stuff for too long. And I think it's time that the church rises up and gets back what Satan has stolen from us. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Because I'm telling you, watch this, a little golf clap ain't going to get it. A little coming to church on Sunday mornings is not going to get it. I'm going to square y'all up. Can y'all take some good old preaching on Sunday morning? Can y'all take some good old Pentecost preaching on Sunday morning? Hold your toes. Listen to me. You can be good all you want. You can come to church once a week all you want. But God is looking for the tribe of Judah. God is looking for that. King David had it figured out. King David said these words, Bobby. You're like this. He had brothers and he was the last one to be chosen. I feel like that all my life. Come to sports, everybody else get chosen, and I'd be the last little blonde hit boy over on the bench. They'll go, well, I'll take Brian. Last at everything. But you know what? David was the last to be anointed with oil. And David said these words. He, even before they built the tabernacle, Brother Mark, he said these words. He said, go find me some people in the tribe of Judah. Go find me some people that'll march around this church, that'll march around the enemy's camp and say, you know what? This church belongs to God. My family belongs to God. You're not getting them no more. God's looking for some Judah worshipers. He's looking for some people that will rise up and say, no, 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 no. This is God's house. David said, I'm going to pay you. Think about how, how this is. David paid the tribe of Judah to worship. And I hear people say this all the time. Well, I don't believe in paying people to do it. You don't believe the Bible. The Bible says, I'm going to blow y'all away, that the man of God and the tribe of Judah is worth double their hire. Oops. Can't touch this. See, the problem is the churches have been lied to for so long. They have set up for mediocrity. They have been lied to for so long. When you talk about something that's moving, it, 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 I'm telling you, the church needs an intervention from Jesus Christ. 
And God spoke into my spirit, and he said, you tell the people not just to come to church and hear the music or hear their favorite song or put their time in, but be so filled with his presence that nothing but worship and praise will just ring out of your body. God spoke this into my heart this morning too early at first service and had to write this down. He said, you breathe in Jesus and you exhale worship. You breathe in Jesus and you exhale worship. You breathe in the name of Jesus and you'll worship me no matter what. Because in the tribe of Judah, that's where God will be found. Also, he said these words into my spirit in the first service. I may have mentioned this to you guys before, but we got a lot of new guests here today. God says, if you never find me privately, I'll never display myself publicly. What God is looking for. Because see, watch me. If we can't worship him in a closet, in our private time, you'll never be able to come to church and to truly focus him in public. That's why a lot of people, I'm going to be honest with you, that's why a lot of people, man, when they come to church, they just sit there. You know why? It's tough, isn't it? You all right? They come to church and they sit there. You know why? You say, well, Brian, that's how they worship. That's not what God says, guys. God says, those who worship me raise holy hands to Zion. Those who worship me will be filled with my spirit and I will run over in their life and whatever you have in you will eventually spew out of you. What I'm trying to tell the churches today, I never thought you'd have to preach like this to convince people that God will do what God says he will do. God's on time every single time. God is for us and he's not against us. He defeated sickness and death and all that on the grave. Somebody praise him in the house today. He's a good God. He's still God. And He still heals and delivers and sets free. But you've got to let Judah rise up in you. Because I'm telling you in my time, this is my story. And this is what I've learned in my journey with the Lord. You've got to have some Judah praise in you. Because I'm telling you, you'll be let down. You'll be hurt. Christians will shoot the wounded. But I'm telling you, the Bible says God has never forsaken the righteous, and his seed has never begged for bread. That's me and you. I'm telling you today, there's something special going on. Watch this in verse 3 of Psalms chapter 76. I love this. He says, notice the first word he said in verse 3. He says what? There. Everybody say there. Say it again, there. There. I want this to get to you. Listen to me. God said, once you find... Judah, once you find worship, there, watch me, Jamie, this is a good word. Because, see, we just read the Bible, and we read, go down through it, and say, oh, that's a good word. Praise be the name of God. I read my three verses today, and patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. But I'm telling you, God says, if you want to outlast your hard time, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you want to be serious and outlast your hard time, he says, in Judah, I'll be found. In praise, I'll be found. And there, watch this, in there, right there in Judah, he says, I'll break the enemy's arrows. I'll break the enemy's bow. I'll break the enemy's sword. I'll even break the battle on your behalf because God loves you. Somebody give me a praise. I know it's hard. It's in praise that your battle is won. Don't miss next week because I'm telling you, I'm going to 1 Samuel chapter 17 about David and Goliath. You're going to find out that story. He didn't beat him with five rocks. He beat him because he was a tribe of Judah. My God. Don't miss next Sunday. Because I'm telling you, in Judah, in praise, you'll find God. If you really want to know him, Jenna, don't wait till you're 30 or 40 or 50. Find him now. How do you find him? In Judah. In worship, in praise. Why did we do what we did Thursday night? Because we know here at this church that through worship, through praise, through Judah, Jesus Christ will be known. That's why we praise like crazy people in here now. And we got people that come in all the time and say, well, it's too loud. Well, this, that, and the other. But isn't it funny you go to stock car races? Isn't it funny? I'm just saying. Are y'all okay? How I many y'all okay? Good? Turn your neighbor and say, you okay? Turn your neighbor and say, preacher, preaching. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here's the deal. See, there's something about Judah praise. 
There's something about when I walk into a hospital room and I see somebody laying on their deathbed and all I see is hands raised up and say, oh, I love the Lord. Boy, there's something unique and special about people who are going through a trying time. And you look at their life and you say, how in the world are you going through what you're going through? And they'll say, oh, if it hadn't been for my Lord, if he hadn't come through for me, I wouldn't be here today. All I know that works is this. When it comes how to outlast your hard times, you must find Judah. You must find praise. You must praise him no matter what, what you're even thinking. Praise the Lord. You say, Brian, you don't understand. He's after my marriage. Praise him. See, you're crazy. I tell him all the time, devil, hit me with your best shot. Take your best shot. You say, Brian, I, I'm not bold like you. You've got the Holy Ghost, don't you? You've got the same spirit in you that I've got in me, right? Well, man of God, woman of God, find Judah. Find praise. And God will say, hey, no matter what, I'm going to come through it. You ain't getting my babies. You're not getting my wife. You're not getting my church. You're not getting the church members. Bring it on, devil. You can't have them anyhow. See, here's the deal. You got to believe that. Because watch me, when y'all get up and we say amen and you walk out, here's what probably, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say this because life and death lies within the sun. Here's what's going to happen now. We're going to leave changed. Amen. Our minds are getting stronger. And I don't care if I've got to be the only one in my pew, in right where I'm at in a blue chair. If I've got to be the only one that'll stand up and give him praise, I'll stand up and give him praise. I don't care where I'm at, who I'm with, where I'm going, I'm going to find Judah. Oh, come on, church. I'll stand up. I'll praise the Lord. He's been too good to sit down. He done brought you too far to sit down. Woo! Lord, I feel a movement of God in this house. Come, Holy Ghost. Stare the waters. Spring up, O well. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I don't went to the enemy's camp. I don't went to the enemy's camp. And why in the world would I allow the devil to steal what God's given me? You say, Brian, do you ever get sick? Do you ever get tired? Oh, the enemy tries to come. The enemy tries to come at me like a flood. But God said, when the enemy comes at you like a flood, I'll raise the standard up. When the enemy tries to get my marriage, when he tries to steal my children, and old drugs is in the school, said, you know how you take it back? You know how you take your school system back? It's not by protesting and raising signs up. It's by finding Judah. That in the midst of a trial, in a circumstance, in a bad situation, in a marriage falling apart, in your children going crazy, hey, I found Judah. I found Judah. I found Judah. I found praise. And people will look at you and say, man, I can't do that. I can't praise. Listen to me. I, I, oh, God just... Mm. I told the first services God gave us to me, and I'm going to give it to you. In heaven, y'all remember Lucifer, right, Satan? In heaven, his name was Lucifer. Lucifer, right? Now watch me now, it's a good, it's a good word. In heaven, Lucifer led the praise band. He led the praise team. But what happened was, see, Satan knows how powerful worship is. Satan knows how powerful when God's people stand up and raise their hands. Satan knows that something, hallelujah, is getting ready to transpire. Something's getting ready to shift. And I can't help it. I just get, I just get, I can't help it, hallelujah. I know some of y'all look at me like, oh, what's going to happen? Boo. See, Satan knows how powerful the tribe of Judah is in you right now. Matter of fact, he knows it's so powerful, he wanted to become the worship pastor of all heaven. And he got thrown out. Oh, that's a good word. And he didn't become Satan until he came to earth. He was Lucifer in heaven. He became Satan here on earth. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He didn't get a name change, hallelujah, until he came to earth. 
So what I'm trying to tell you is Satan believes more in Judah than a lot of Christians believe in the Judah in them right now. Satan knows if God's people will rise up and the tribe of Judah starts rising up and they start marching around God's house, God, Satan knows that something's going to happen. So I'm declaring today a Judah praise. I'm declaring today no matter what you're going through, no matter what trial you're in right now, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what your family looks like, I'm telling you today how to get out of the hard times, how to outlast it. Y'all ready? You must become a worshiper. A worshiper. I didn't say tongues. Because y'all get really, oh, Pentecostal, charismatic, get all confused about this. Here's the deal. Y'all ready? If somebody stands up on a Sunday morning and tries to speak in tongues, the first thing I will do, I will calm them down, and I'll say, does anybody, does anybody know what they're saying? So there must be an interpreter in the house. Let's just check this out. I really believe what Satan tries to do is confuse the churches. And Satan knows if Judah will sit still, the battle, you'll lose the battle. Why was it, Sammy, that David said, before I go into war, I got to get Judah out there first? Why was it every time the tabernacle would be took down and put back up, he says, Judah, you got to go worship. you got to lead us in worship. Because you know why? Everything that we do, we were created to worship. You are created to worship Jesus Christ. And Satan himself, the angel that was thrown out of heaven, who became Satan on earth, knows that if Judah will rise up, if the church would rise up, something's going to happen. we got to have a Judah praise back in the church. Hallelujah. So i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do it in here. Praise team, y'all come. If you want to, see, most people want to live on the mountain. But God said these words, and I love it. He says, though I go through the valley, valley of shadow of death I'll fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff they comfort me we serve a valley God we serve a valley God that's where the flowers bloom and grow the brightest is in the valleys when you don't think you're doing well and things are coming up against you oh brother Brian I'm in the valley if you just look around, you'll find a, a flower blooming. If you just look around, you'll find Judah rising up. If you just look around and quit paying more attention to your problems and start giving God praise, I promise you, your problems will go away. But you got to do it. you got to give God a Judah praise. It's a Judah praise. You say, Brian, what is a Judah praise? I'm glad you all asked. It's very unique. A Judah praise is a sound of one body, one unit, together at one time. The upper room, they had a Judah praise. After they had a Judah praise, the Holy Spirit fell. After the Holy Spirit fell, God started giving them souls, Great Commission Church. If y'all will just listen to me just for two more minutes. What I'm trying to tell the churches today is this. It's not about a noise, it's about a praise. And if God's people will get unified, oh, help me preach Holy Spirit. If God's people would come together and drop everything around you and say, God, today I come to give you a Judah praise. Today, God, I'm going to drop everything around me, God. I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care what's going on around me. Even if i got to set my baby beside me and say, raise your hands in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands. It's called a Judah praise. And what happens is, when the church comes together, unified, and give God a shout, there's power in it. The atmosphere will change. Satan knows that. Why does he think, why do y'all think that most churches say this? Now, you got to be quiet. You sit there. If you got to pee, you pee on yourself. Y'all laughing at me, but I was the one who got in trouble for that. They'll tell you to sit there. Don't you do nothing. You sit there and you, you do this. And don't you even breathe. If you breathe just a little bit. And they'll put all these rules and all these regulations. 
This is what you got to be, and you got to worship like this. My God, if we've seen what they've done in the upper room, the reason why the upper room worked is because it was one church, not denominations, but one church, one body, one Lord, one Savior, and one praise, and the Holy Ghost fell down on them. Somebody praise God in this house.